Hey everyone, it is Harlan and welcome to our session on Invisible SEO. I think it's important that people understand that if you haven't been successful online, you really need to know some of the history of what's going on and I think that what you're going to understand is that most of the people here have been caught in a kind of a game. Now there's some people who never intended to play the game, there's some people who joined in reluctantly, and some people who innocently didn't even know that there was a game that they were supposed to play. So we're going to jump in and we're going to talk about invisible SEO. We're going to take your questions at the end of the call, but I hope you're going to learn something about what's happening today. Now I'm going to say this, that if you are someone who practices uh, what's called black hat SEO, you're probably, um, you, you're probably not going to be <coughs> very happy with what we're talking about today. No, you're going to, um, to think that I, I don't have a right to be sharing these things or that cutting the corners is, is an acceptable way. I recently spent time in Las Vegas and I had lunch with Matt Cutts at, when I was at the PubCon conference and Matt spoke about leveling the playing field. And I think leveling the playing field is a really good theme for us because it, when you level the playing field it literally means giving everybody a chance. And so everybody does have a chance. And I'm going to show you what's going on and then we're going to see that if you're interested you can uh, join me in learning more. Again, this is a non-pitch call. There is nothing that is going to be sold on this call, during this call. Um, the only thing that I'm here for is to share information with you. If you have a question, make sure to write it down because we're not going to stop in the middle but we will take questions that are related to what we covered on this call during the call. Okay, so let's go back to the start of Google. Let's go back to two guys who are in college, um, Sergey Brin and Larry Page, and they decide that they're going to come up with a search engine. And their dream um, was to really ultimately be able to access all information everywhere. Their dream, which still powers Google, is we want to be able to find every piece of information that ever existed. And Google's done lots of pro projects and created lots of products to make that possible. Google's gotten into lots of trouble um, because of this dream. For example, in the news this week, France wants to penalize Google millions and millions of dollars or millions and millions of francs because Google thinks that they should be able to link in Google News to stories that are on French websites. And the French websites, following the websites from England and the United States, are saying, wait a minute, you're making us irrelevant. You're saying that people can find news without coming to us. And of course, the French government has taken the uh, side, the position of the news websites, and they're saying, Google, your idea of making information everywhere <coughs> is going to hurt people and put them out of business. But Google's brilliant idea is that all information should be available. The Library Association is mad at Google. Okay, what could get these um, um, what could get these librarians in in such a snit? Okay, so um, what got them got them in such a snit is that Google wants to scan and index. Every single library, every single book that's ever been published, and it thinks that people should have access to all books ever. 
Well, you know, there are just a few things that have a problem with that, like librarians. If you could just go to your computer and find everything, can you think of a certain profession that might be out of a job soon? Um, if Google had its way, what would happen to copyright law? Wait a minute, all that stuff is now available? What if I don't have to buy books anymore? So Google's ultimate brilliant idea was that everyone, you, me, our children, our children's children, should have access to all information everywhere, and preferably they should be the one to be the toll booth, and of course they'll collect money for it. So not only will all the information be there and be accessible and be logical, but they also make some money in the process. So Google started what we'll call indexing websites. And the original co computers at Google were really PCs that they bought by the dozens and they strung them together and that was doing the Google search. Of course, uh, Brin and Page and other br brilliant mathematicians were figuring out formulas which are called algorithms that let you determine, let Google determine which site is better than another site. So let's pretend that you have two websites that are about how to play golf. Well, how was Google supposed to determine which website was better? And Page came up with an idea. And the idea that he had was that we're going to measure how other users on the internet treat your site. If people come to your site and they think it's valuable, they will link from their site to your site. If they don't think it's valuable, well, then they won't. And so this was really the start of the game. And the bottom line here is that Google's brilliant idea literally became the downfall for thousands and thousands of small entrepreneurs just like you, just like me, and every time Google tried to do something to help their search, um, opportunity was created, and at the same time that opportunity was created, people were hurt. So, I don't know about you, but when I went to school, we used to say when someone would cheat in a game, cheaters never prosper except sometimes they do. And every time that Google figured something out, there were people out there who outfigured, outsmarted, outplayed, outdid, outperformed Google. And they put all kinds, they figured out all kinds of tricks. And you know, there are plenty of smart people who given any system, okay, it's really a reflection of personality. You can either do well with the system and follow the rules, or you can cheat the system and not follow the rules. And there are lots of people who are really good at coming into a situation, sizing it up, and, and cheating and breaking the rules. I spent time this weekend with someone who figured out the Facebook rules really, really simple, really, really early. He told me that what he did doesn't work anymore. I'm not sure if I believe him or not, but basically he told me that he was advertising on Facebook and spending $60,000 a day. Facebook gave him a limit of $100,000 a day. He spent $60,000 every day and he made $100,000 in return. So that means he was making a profit of $40,000 every single day from Facebook. Now what he was doing wasn't 100% kosher, if you will. 
what he was doing wasn't 100% honest, if you will. What he was doing um, is no longer acceptable on Facebook. But smart people, even if they are dishonest, sometimes figure out things that we can't figure out. And that has a lot to do with what's going on today. So remember when Google said that the measure of the value of a site was how many people linked to that site? Okay. Well, it didn't take long for people who wanted to shortcut the system to go out and start buying links. Okay. Well, I'm either going to buy links or I'm going to manufacture links, but all that matters is me going out and getting links. Okay. Now, I'm recording this the day after Thanksgiving. And, you know, last night, lots and lots of kids across the country went out trick-or-treating. And all they're thinking about is candy, 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 I want candy, I want to get candy, 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 candy. And by the end of the evening, um, when they come home, they've got their bags or their jack-o'-lanterns full. And all they're thinking about, because they're probably sugar uh, list, um, you know, sugar extreme, is, is, is all they're thinking about is, I've got to get more candy. I've got to get more candy. And internet marketers soon learned that I want to get to page one of Google. Google wants links. Well, I'm going to go out and get me some links. Now, in many cases, people went out and bought links. In other cases, they hired people to um, go out and get them links. Very, very few people actually spent time building links. Google wanted people to naturally acquire links, but to tell you the truth, most people who were running websites didn't know how to build links. They didn't understand why they should build links, and so they didn't. And then when they heard that you can get links and you don't have to spend time building them, well, quite naturally, that became very appealing. The race to cheat was on. And every time there was an opportunity for people to make money online, ethically or unethically, there was a huge traffic jam. They're off and running, and everybody who had the opportunity to get in on something early enough ended up being out there uh, doing the, uh, the best they could to get the head, the rest of the pack. Now, it didn't matter what your niche was in. If you were, and, and gosh, I remember some of these days, if you had a site about golf, you wanted to have, you wanted to be number one listed under golf. When someone typed in golf, you wanted your site to come up. If you, or, or play golf. Or I remember when I was actively working on my golf site, I remember discovering that one of the golden keywords that people were typing in was the phrase golf swing. And I found a guy who owned the site golfswing.com. And I tracked him down, and I got him on the phone. And I said, um, do you want to sell golfswing.com? And he said, well, I just want you to know, and he mentioned the name of a major golf um, company, that they just offered me $750,000 for the domain name and I turned that down. So unless you're prepared to give me more than $750,000, uh, let's just not even go there. And of course, I was not prepared to pay $750,000 for a domain name, but it was actually staggering. Because everybody knew that if you had the exact match domain, golfswing.com, and 
the search phrase was golf swing, you were going to come up at the top. Okay, so people engaged in practices of stealing other people's domains. It was the entire game of the hyphenated domains, golfswing.com, realgolfswing.com, bestgolfswing.com, golf swing site better than anyone else, golf swing scams, golf swing reviews, anything that would get your site onto page one of Google. Uh, became acceptable. And Google, like the horses that wear blinders, Google turned a blind eye to all of this. It didn't want to know because the game was on. In fact, Google invented one of the first systems for cheating. It was a, this, this system uh, made people millions and millions of dollars. But again, you had to be one of those people who knew how to cheat the system. Uh, what people would do was called arbitrage. And what they would do is they would buy keywords with Google AdWords and they would bring people to a site that had Google AdSense on it. And if someone clicked one of the ads on the Google AdSense site, you got paid big money. Now the key here was to buy your keywords for very low money and to have on your site um, high ranking keywords. So let's say for example um, you bought uh, the keyword dream interpretation. Now the keyword dream interpretation, back when the ga this game was on, you could buy the keyword dream interpretation for less than a nickel a click. Okay? And you would bring people to your site, but when they came to your site, its a theory was about dream interpretation, but instead it was about asbestos cancer and mesothemia, whatever it is, uh, which had the highest pay per click. And so people would click on ads and the website owner would make a fortune of money. Google made a fortune of money. And the only people who were dumb were the advertisers who were getting their money, uh, were getting cheated out of their money. Even better for the cheaters, is that they went offshore to China, they went offshore to um, Eastern Europe, and they hired people in India, the Philippines, Singapore to click on the ads so they made more money. And of course the advertisers were spending money and it was costing them a fortune and they weren't getting any business. And Google looked at it and went, uh-oh, they had to fix it. But let's remember right now that the whole system of shenanigans and dishonesty was, ended, it was invented by Google. Now they didn't intend for people to cheat, but when, they found, when, when people were cheating, Google denied it. When the first allegations of click fraud arose, that people were hiring uh, machines or bots to click on ads so that they could get paid, Google denied it. They said, impossible, can't be. We found out that, you know, we're the best. We measure that stuff. And as was determined in court, well, maybe they weren't the best. And maybe there was a lot of cheating going on. How much cheating? Hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to show you a check for AdSense, back in the days when they sent out checks, they soon moved to direct deposit, you were going to see someone in Canada's check who knew how to play the system. Ladies and gentlemen, please sit down. There it is. That check is for $901,000 Canadian dollars. $901,000 Canadian dollars and that represents a monthly check. Okay, 
we're talking huge money involved. And people who knew how to play the game actually started a club. And the club was called the 25K Club. And the reason they wanted to be in the 25K Club was because if your check was worth more than $25,000 a month, Google FedExed it to you. So they all had this, this game of let's get into the, the club so we can have the FedEx truck deliver our check monthly and not like the poor people who were making five or six thousand dollars a month and they had to get their check through the mail. Okay? Was it dishonest? Yeah. Yes. Did Google knew who was cheating? Yes. But did Google keep the game going? Yes. Because remember, when Google was paying this guy nearly a million dollars a month, Google was profiting off this guy nearly a million dollars a month. Do you understand that this was really a very dishonest game and Google was a willing player? Okay, I'm going to take a pause, clear my breath, and I'm going to let you uh, type in um, what you think about the dishonesty that was uh, going on. Or you think it's okay and, you know, heck, if somebody's going to give me a million dollars a month, I'll be as dishonest as I want. Um, tell me what you're thinking. Uh, type it in. And the other thing that I want to ask is, you know, are you learning something here? Are you learning something? Okay, is this stuff that you knew? Or, you know, Harlan, you're... You're wasting time. Move on. Type in what you think. Okay? Go ahead. Type it in. We'll take a quick look at what, what people are saying. Fascinating. Learning. What do I do? Yes, I'm learning. Yes, I'm learning. Yes, I'm learning. Very informative. Move on. Okay. Karma exists. This is new. Learning. Okay. Keep going. All right. I got this. All right. Here we go. Let's move. So, People would say, my site isn't number one. Now, I know that the number one site on Google makes a lot of money, but my site isn't number one. What can I do about it? Okay. So, everybody figured out there had to be a shortcut. The first shortcut was to figure out what keywords I should have. And then you would write pages that had very little sense in them, but they were filled with keywords. Or even better, and blatantly dishonest is that on the bottom of the page, let's say your page was white, people would put on the bottom of the page words in white so that only Google could see them. So down at the bottom of the page, you would stuff keywords with things like golf swing, best golf swing, learn golf swing, how to do a golf swing, Tiger Woods golf swing, Sam Snead golf swing, professional golf swing, PGA golf swing, and someone would come to your site and they wouldn't even see it, but Google would. And there would be pages and pages and pages of this stuff. And people would stuff keywords into their uh, meta tags up at the bottom of the uh, top of the page. And then people would optimize pages and they would write on their page and the pages didn't make any sense because they weren't written for people, they were written for the search engines. And there were techniques called cloaking where one page was shown to you and another page was shown to Google. And there were a lot of people who made a lot of money cloaking pages. Now even though cloaking pages Google said was bad, Man, people got away with this stuff for years. And then there were links. Google said, we want links. Links are the way we're going to judge the value of your site. So Google said, we want links. And people said, fine, we'll get you links. We'll get you all the links you want. And so you named the SEO trick, and people were doing it just to get to the top of page one of Google. And to tell you the truth, these tricks were very, very effective. And what they ended up producing was, if you knew the tricks, you didn't even have to be all that skilled. 
you could very easily trick Google into a page one number one ranking. Besides, what's wrong with being number one? Now Google's motto was don't be evil. But people began treating Google and thinking about Google um, almost like what you know what you would think about the Nazis. Because the way Google did things was every so often they would update their rankings. And this was called the Google Dance. And people came out with an expression that Google is dancing. And there would be different updates. And there was the Florida update. Gosh, I remember the you know, October update. Some of these updates were, you know, really label me as being online for a long time. And of course, modern much more modern updates are penguin and panda updates and Google would from time to time go through the rankings find out the trick that people were doing and eliminate the trick and as soon as they eliminated one trick you know what people would do they would come up and do another trick to get to the top of Google want to be number one well here were just some of the ways that people would become number one. Number one, push button sites. There were, uh, I actually saw someone in Israel selling this, where you pushed a button and you literally had 10,000 websites all around the internet all pointing at your site. You wanted sites? You gave it to them, you gave it to Google, they, you had 10,000 links. Then, of course, every, Google figured out, well, you know, all those sites are in your account. So people began building link networks so that they didn't own those other sites. You get the idea? It's keeping one step ahead of the Google. It was a cat and mouse game. The mouse made a move. The cat caught up. The mouse made another uh, move. People figured out Google liked content and they started auto posting. And so I actually created software a long, long time ago. I heard about auto posting and I wanted to go after the keyword golf swing. I didn't even know how the heck I figured out how to do this. I hired some people in Cuba. I never made the software available to anyone else. And um, I used, I don't even remember the name of the web host that I used, but my, it was too successful. It was kind of like the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Um, I got a call from my website company going, what are you doing? And I said, I'm not doing anything. And they said, we don't know what your site is doing, but you're getting a huge amount of traffic and we can't handle it. And I said, well, I didn't do anything. You know, I didn't think there was anything wrong with what I was doing. And um, they slammed my account shut and they said, we'll never let you open up another account. And I didn't understand what I did wrong. And for a day or two, I was getting huge traffic coming to the site without even doing anything. So it worked, um, but it wasn't the honest way of doing things. Then there were people who started, well, you know, if one site is good, then more sites are better. And they built these thousand site empires. I remember being at the big seminar and someone got up and sold 12,000 AdSense sites ready to go, all built, all content, and I think it was $16,000. And people were lining up to buy these thousand site empires, which incidentally Google found and squished before they even got home from the webinar. Um, or how many people have gone to a seminar where people say, hey, you don't have to learn how to create a website. We'll sell you a ready to go website um, and you don't have to do anything. Just, you know, we'll do all the work for you and you make all the money. And, you know, there's a woman who contacted me. She's on my list. And this woman paid $20,000 for a website that just 
doesn't um, um, that just doesn't work. Uh, that that does just doesn't work. Okay, um, it didn't do anything. I felt really badly for her because this was not a woman who could afford it. Auto blogs. When everybody started making the um, the move from regular HTML websites to WordPress, auto blogging sites would basically just keep pounding. They would go out. They would scrape the internet. They would post to the internet based on certain keywords, lots of fresh content, fooled Google for a while, and people made lots and lots of money. And you know, each of these sites maybe made twenty or thirty dollars a day. And so people would get hundreds of these robot sites. They would steal other people's content and they would make six hundred dollars a day without doing anything. And Google said these aren't quality sites and they shut that down. Buying links. It's still happening. SEO software that magically puts your site number one, stuffing keywords, linking software, blog spam. If you've ever had a blog and you get all the spam comments in your blog, well, um, it, the reason was that they're linking back to their sites and Google valued those comments, so everybody on the internet had to suffer because these people were trying to beat Google at the game. Then there are two pieces of software. They're rather expensive pieces of software. One's called Evo, and the other one's called SE Nuke. And these were software um, that basically were there to trick Google into forcing your site to be number one. Of course, they did it by spamming the internet. EDU sites, education sites. Google supposedly considered EDU sites to be very, very valuable. So people started posting their um, links on EDU sites and people started selling it. Link networks. This was a big thing. This came crashing down in the past year. Uh, now there are link sites where you put up a site, you want to protect your money site, so you put up sites that you're going to get links to so that if Google takes down your link site, your main site is supposedly protected. And finally, forum span. If you ever owned a forum and you had dozens and hundreds of, of comments that were selling Viagra or other medications, that was forum span and people were doing it for the links. So Google, in their effort to do no evil and ensure a good search, was letting every scammer and their brother literally get away with murder. And then there were the honest people. The honest people who really wanted to keep things ethical, but the devil was saying to them, come on, everybody else is buying links. You should buy links too. And people didn't know what to do. They didn't want to break the rules, but you know they weren't experts. These were not black hat programmers. Like when I uh, created that software for my uh, golf site, I wasn't intending on cheating the system. I thought it was something good. Unfortunately, not knowing what the heck I was doing, um, you know, my software, my my hosting company wasn't very happy with me. But I didn't know what I was doing. Google created a huge mess, and here is a mess. It's a mess because people could no longer find valuable sites because so many people were cheating the system. Google was encouraging people to cheat the system and then they were turn around saying, oh you cheated and then they were penalizing people. So it became this endless cycle of cheating and they were forcing everybody in to do it. Unfortunately, the idea <coughs> spread that you could get rich quick. You could put out a product, put on, put up a website, you could buy traffic from Google, uh, you could buy links, you could get your site to be page one very, very quickly, and then bottom line is you could, um, you could start making money overnight. And so again, the prospect of uh, get rich quick got lots and lots of people involved. And that was basically part of a huge problem. 
Google then got caught with their pants down, literally. It is two years ago or so, three years ago or so, and the New York Times does an expose about J.C. Penney. J.C. Penney hired someone to do SEO for them. And what they did was they started buying lots and lots of links on really crappy sites. And so if you typed in men's pajamas, J.C. Penney came out number one. If you typed in women's pajamas, J.C. Penney came out number one. If you typed in children's slippers, J.C. Penney came out number one. If you typed in men's out, um, coats, J.C. Penney came number one. And that was not natural. J.C. Penney started ranking for more keywords than just about anyone else. So the bottom line was that J.C. Penney cheated and they got outed by the New York Times. And when they got outed by the New York Times, it wasn't that J.C. Penney was bad, it was look how easy it is to manipulate the system. And the bottom line was, yeah, Google punished uh, J.C. Penney by sending their site from page one to something like page 588 for a while, and J.C. Penney had to get rid of all of those links and apologize, but the egg was on the face of Google because they got caught, and when they got caught, everybody suffered because they showed how easy it was to manipulate the system, and they also showed that there was absolutely no reason to not try and manipulate the system. So pretty soon, everybody was doing it. And Google's cure was, let's punish everybody. Now, whenever Google came up with an answer to clean up the internet, they never explained it. They just did it. Shoot first, ask questions later. And pretty soon, more and more small people, small businessmen, more and more small entrepreneurs like you and like me would find that our pages that were on page one of, the, of Google, page two of Google, all of a sudden couldn't even be found. We didn't do anything wrong. We were just doing things the way we wanted. But little did we know that Google was penalizing us. Why were they penalizing us? Because everybody else was cheated. And, you know, we've got to punish somebody, so we might as well punish the innocent. And that's why lots and lots of people who are making money online stop making money online because <coughs> they got punished by Google for something they didn't even do. Google started banning sites. They started banning sites. What people were doing, they didn't know what they were doing. So they just did what everybody else was doing. They knew they needed links. They're not web experts. And they went ahead and they just started banning sites, and you couldn't even find your own sites. And of course, the people who got into the internet for, um, to make money were actually losing money. Now, incidentally, one of the things that went on on the internet, and perhaps people aren't going to be happy with me for doing this, is that the internet marketing gurus, what they would do is they had their own system for ranking sites. And as soon as the system didn't work anymore, this is really nasty, but as soon as it didn't work anymore, they would turn around and sell it to like you and me. Because when they were making money, they didn't want the competition. But when Google caught them, oh, well, it's time for us to release this to everybody else. And that was a pretty nasty trick, but nonetheless, that's what people were doing. Google turned the internet into a cesspool of scam and spam, and people who tried to play by the rules were punished. And if you tried to cheat because you thought that was Google, what Google wanted, 
they turned around and punished you for it. Am I making myself clear? And put your hand up if you know, I'm going to take a moment to breathe, put your hand up if you know what I'm talking about and any of your sites got caught in, in this kind of stuff. People are saying, I know from years of experience, yes, that my site, Peter, who hasn't said hello to me in a long time, says absolutely. Um, oh, and Norm wants to know, is that why I dislike the warrior forum? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait, we're getting to them. It just made me doubt the validity of the Internet and Internet marketers. Okay, stick with me. Not mine, but people I know. Okay. Uh, most of my EMD sites are gone. Yeah, we're going to come to that. My site, too. Okay. So we're here, and we're going to get to all of your questions, okay? Um, this is history. When do I start talking about the future? Really soon. Really soon, David, okay? Um, all right. Uh, interesting. Can't wait to see where this is going. Okay, so stick with me. Whoa. Okay, temptation. Here's something from the Warrior Forum. Grab up to 45,000 backlinks every month with this three-click setup plugin guaranteed. Two minutes installation, and you never have to worry about backlinks again. Okay, this is one of my, of my favorite posts from one of my favorite places on Earth, and it's the Warrior Forum Special Offer Forum. Now, my dog is really, really bored right now, and she wants to come play with me. And so she's bringing her, her, her squeaky toy and sitting right underneath me and saying, you're not giving me any attention, so I'm going to get it anyway. Okay, yes, I know. I love you, and I'll play with you right after I'm done with these good people. Okay? Okay, good. Go play with Sandra. All right, so I'm going to get 45,000 backlinks every month. Or how about this? I want to be respectable. Remember we talked about EDU links? Google, those are education links. In theory, they're clean. Well, the EDU blog factory. We will create blogs containing your backlinks on powerful EDU blogs every day. Just sit back, relax, and watch your site climb the search engines. That's right. Now, most people came to that and said, oh, that sounds like a good idea. I've heard about those sites. Those are really good. And people thought that they were going to be found on like blogs from Harvard, Stanford, Yale, NYU. Instead, they found themselves on EDU sites in Eastern Europe, and nobody ever heard of these sites. And they ended up not doing anything except making the people who built these fake EDU sites a lot of money. They would go to abandoned EDU sites, to abandoned blogs on these EDU sites. They would go to Poland, get someone to join the school, set up hundreds of blogs and just post spam links. And you know what? For a period of time, it actually worked. And as soon as Google figured out what was going on, they shut this down too. And then there's David Sp the Spammer versus Goliath. Go on to Fiverr.com and in any moment of the day, you can find things like this. I will, and this is all for five bucks. I will give you awesome 7,777 plus Google safe links from 266,000 plus unique domains and backlinks, backlinks for 5,000. I will build 15,000 wiki backlinks to your website to Google Penguin and Panda Safe. Of course they're safe. Would someone who you don't even know who they are on on Fiverr lie to you? Um, I will create 900 profile verified backlinks and do follow profile, fast delivered, 24 hours for $5. Okay? I, will, I will put your website on the first page of Google search engine with 14,050 wiki backlinks. All is the best Google for $5. Okay? And it's all done overnight. They have software that spams all of these sites and Google, what does Google do? Google punishes you and that's how it works. That's the game. 
you decide that you want to be on page one of Google, you decide that you need links, and you decide that you're going to buy links from an ethical site like Fiverr or the Warrior Forum, and you get into a lot of trouble. Scams galore. Here we are on my favorite site on earth, the Warrior Special Offer Forum. Number one spot on Google, number one in a day, easy click software tool, increases traffic, page rank, and pro profits. Guaranteed page one of Google, only $49, one-time payment, kick Google's ass. Video proof included how I ranked number one on Google in 24 hours. Okay. Um, watch me make $2,388.46 in one week with five-minute YouTube cl clips anyone can make no being on camera or PPC. Offliners, our amazing software does it all, done for you client getting. Yes, you just lay back in your easy chair, have someone drop bonbons into your mouth, and you'll be on page one of Google. And by the way, this is all super Google uh, Penguin Panda safe. You can trust us, can't you? Well, no. So. Then Google said, you know what, we're the good guys here. We're going to come in and we're going to clean this up. And in the past year, Google's gone after these sites like Build My Rank, Linkvana, SEO Nitro, Blog Networks, Link Farms, Article Sites, Unnatural Links, and Exact Match Domains. The only thing is, when Google went ahead and did all of these things that marketers were doing because they didn't have, feel that they had another choice, everybody, instead of treating Google like the, the, the Jedi that they thought they were, they ended up treating them like the Sith Lords. And everybody thought Google is the epitome of evil. I bought into Build My Rank because I thought they were going to lift my search engine but I ended up getting penalized for it. Or SEO Nitro, who had a system of link networks, and these, you know, you had to buy in and be ultra secret, and you had to um, put your hand up and cross your heart with peanut butter and say, I promise I'm not affiliated with, with Google, and then everybody was linking to everybody else's sites or doing it automatically, and they thought that the people in Google were stupid. And Google said, no, we're not stupid. And they started penalizing people. And people who really didn't know what they were doing and didn't intend to do something wrong, all of a sudden, their websites went to website jail. Now here's Vicky. Vicky is on the call. And Vicky, of course, has a highly suspicious site all about healing with your chakras. Okay? It's a simple site. She has some healing tattoos, really work, shopforboosters.com. And no longer does Vicky rank for the keywords that she used to rank for. She has been sent to a very, very special place. She's been sent to Devil's Island for keywords because she was a very, very bad person. Why was she a very bad person? Okay, I'm going to show you. That's where she went. She went to Fiverr. And she went and she bought one of those guys who, decide, who was going to help her out for five bucks and build backlinks for her site. And instead of helping her out, her site got, Google said, yeah, this guy's building links for everybody and we can find those links. And you were a bad girl. Go sit in the corner. No one will ever find your site again as long as we have anything to do with it. And of course, a site that was making money is no longer making money. A site that was building a list is no longer building a list. And the cost for all of this nonstop action was just $5 to some nobody on Fiverr who got her site banned. What's the penalty? Well, in some cases, it's as extreme as this. Your site has been removed from the Google index. Google may temporarily or permanently remove sites from its index and search results if it believes it's obligated to do so by law. Okay, well that doesn't apply here. Or if the sites do not meet Google's quality guidelines. Uh-oh, because their quality guidelines include you can't buy links. 
or for other reasons, such as if the sites detract from the user's ability to locate relevant information. We cannot comment on the individual reasons this page may be removed. <coughs> However, certain actions, actions such as cloaking, writing text in such a way that it cannot be seen by this, it can be seen by the search engines, but not by users. We're setting up pages slash links with the sole purpose of fooling search engines may result in removal from our index. Around this time, it's time for the cartoon music to come in and go wah, 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 wah. Because what happened is your site got penalized and you didn't even really know why because you didn't get a warning. Sometimes if you set up a Google Webmaster Tools account, Google would say, hey, we're about to penalize your site. But if you didn't set that up and you didn't know to check it, well, nobody notified you and your site was just banned. And this is where we are today with tens of hun and hundreds of sites being banned from Google. Now, I went ahead and checked her site, Chakra Boosters, and I found out that her site has 1,184 links. That's because she didn't use the software that would have gotten her 45,000 links a month. And Google's saying, well, your site really didn't earn those links. Okay, you tried to fool us, so now you get to pay. And how do you pay? Because we're putting you, uh, we're putting you in timeout. We're putting you and your website. My dog is deliberately dropping her bone to get my attention. Okay, yes, go ahead. We love you. Um, your site didn't earn those eleven thousand eighty-four links for having great content. You bought the links. You can't fool us. We're the experts at fooling people. I mean, we're the experts at stamping out evil. And right now, you're a bad person and you're evil. So what they did was they came out with a new way. And the new thing was they said, okay, look, we know that we are partially responsible for this mess. We know that you didn't mean to be a bad person, but you accidentally were a bad person. And so we're going to create something from you. You need to open up a, if your site has bad links to it, um, if your site has bad links to it because you bought them, okay, or you bought one of these programs that gets you bad links, and now you're saying, oh, Google, I have seen the light. I will never turn to evil again. Google said, all right, look. We're going to let you out of the, of the penalty box, but this is what you have to do. You have to know all the bad links that are on your site. We're not going to tell you all the bad links. You have to tell us what you did. You have to find the bad links. You have to contact the sites that had the bad links up, and you have to say, Oh, please, sir, I didn't really mean for you to link from your site to my site. I'm as pure as the driven snow. I don't really know what I was even thinking. So you, Mr. Webmaster in Poland, you, Mr. Webmaster in the Philippines or Singapore, would you be so good as to take down the bad links for me? And of course, you know that nobody is going to pay any attention to the email. So what Google said was, OK. We expect you to try and get those bad links down. But if you can't get your bad links down, you can tell us all of the bad links, and we will disavow those links. We will not count, that, count them against you. Okay? And so we will remove the penalty, but that's still no reason for us to move your site up. It's just a way of removing the penalty. Now, I'm telling you that your site is not going to bounce up to the top of page one 
like a ping pong ball that you release underwater and that floats its way to the top. Okay, that's not going to happen. On the other hand, um, at least you can remove the penalties and start off on neutral ground, level the playing field, and you're going to discover shortly where to go from here. But you know, the games continue. I was in a discussion on Facebook with somebody who specializes in cheating for his clients. And I asked him a question. Here you are, it's the latest rendition of fooling Google. And again, he sent people to Fiverr. Okay. Fiverr should be the kiss of death for uh, for SEO, but no, he's sending his clients to Fiverr, and instead of buying links, he's buying Google uh, Pluses, he's buying tweets, he's buying uh, Facebook stuff, and he thinks that Google is stupid. So I said to him, what are you going to tell your clients if their site gets banned? And his answer is, well, it's never happened yet. All right, well, look what happened to Vicky when she spent $5 at Fiverr and in return for that uh, $5 that went from her pocket into some stranger's pocket, she now has her site in uh, Google's bad side. So the games continue and the games are always going to continue. Once Google comes up with a rule, there are always going to be people who want to uh, figure out how they can break the rules, okay? And that's what the game is all about. The game is all about let's try and get one step ahead of Google, okay? And Google says, uh-uh-uh, no you don't, go to the back of the line and you come back and you sneak up to the front of the line using some things and Google bans your site. Uh, picture it this way. You know, you want to sneak up a flight of steps that you're not supposed to be there. Google's at the top. It throws you down the flight of steps and you sneak up the back way. And Google five goes, runs to the back way and throws you down the, the, the flight of steps. And the games continue. There was a movie that came out years ago. It was one of my all-time favorite movies. It was War Games. It was about a kid who hacked into a d Defense Department computer. And the thing about this computer was um, that this computer learned how to think. And the kid accidentally triggered um, in the mind of the computer World War III against Russia and was triggering launches, except that the computer didn't know um, that it was a game and it lost sight of the game and was getting ready to launch World War III. And lo and behold, the only way, the, the computer was programmed to lock out interference once it knew that there was a threat going on. And the only way to get through to the computer was to teach it. And the kid started playing tic-tac-toe with the computer. And soon he and the computer were playing. And then he told the computer to play itself. And you saw thousands of screens of the computer playing itself tic-tac-toe and the game ending in a draw each time. And then the, game, the computer stopped and said, the only way to win is not to play and then it shut off the equipment and stopped the war game because it had learned, because it was a learning computer, that the only way to win is not to play. Now if you'd like to win by not playing the game, type that in. Remember we're not selling anything here, but if you'd like to find out an honest and ethical way of, of having an online business, just type in, yeah, I'm interested, you have my attention, okay? Yeah, show me, show me. Uh, let's freaking win, for God's sakes. Yeah, I want to win, you have my attention. 
Okay, I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm leaving. Is there any other way? Okay, so here we're going to go, and we're going to we're going to show you. And we've we've been on for over an hour already. I hope you know that we set the interest for you. But let's ask a question. How much time do you think these websites spend on SEO? The New York Times, Mashable.com, ESPN, iVillage, Drudge Report, and, and there could be thousands, tens of thousands more. If I want information, you know, my son is, is a hockey guy, and if I want to find out about the NHL strike, I don't go to Google and I don't type in keywords. Okay, I'll go to bleacherreport.com. I'll go to um, hockeynews.com. I'll go to puckdaddy.com. Or I'll go to all three. But these sites are not spending any time doing SEO hiring out SEO services. They're not building links to their site. People are going to their sites because they want the information. And they keep people coming back again and again and again because of the quality of the information. Now I'm going to tell you a secret. That Google changes what it wants mostly the same way that people change their clothes you know, or change their socks or, or that people should change their socks. But one thing that Google will never ever change is that Google wants good quality information. The problem is that people are stuck playing the game so instead of building a quality site they're building the sites for Google instead of building the sites for raving fans who will come to you every single day. So you want to know how much time we spent doing SEO for the Doggington Post? I'll tell you, absolutely none. We spend no time doing SEO. And yet, in the last 30 days, We've had 140,000 page views in the past month. Okay, I got this statistic right before we came on the webinar. That is a current number. It's really 139,000 and something. I rounded it up. I know that you would be more impressed like the warrior for, the forum guy who said that he makes $2,312.42 every day. Okay, yeah. Okay, I rounded it up. I acknowledge it. If that makes you hate me, um, I understand. But the way we do it is by building a site that, um, that has a lot of critical elements that I've been doing some really serious thinking about. Now, if you're interested in this, if you've learned something about your site or you've learned something about the history of SEO and you have any interest in saying, okay, um, what do I have to do? So for those of you who are saying, okay, you didn't tell us anything, the answer is, yeah, here's what I'm telling you. You've got to build a destination site just like these guys. Stop tricking Google. You'll get masses of traffic. Okay, and, and remember, this is a site now that is, is less than a year old. This is less than a year old. Someone told me, I remember when we got started, and we were getting, you know, um, 60, you know, 15,000 page views a month. He said, Harlan, when you get over 60,000 page views a month, um, you're good. Okay, well, you know what? There's a long way to go, right? Um, sites like the Huffington Post and Drudge Report are getting a billion page views a month. All right, I, I got a way to go to get there. You know, probably not going to do it this year. Maybe not even next year. But it's on the way. So if you're interested in exploring more and being on another webinar 
where I'm going to show you more about this, then the answer is to build your own super site and never worry about SEO or money again. That's the answer. Build your own super site and never worry about SEO or money again. And of course, the answer is to do it ethically, to do it on, honestly, and never have a problem that um, if you create the right kind of site, Google can't help but bring people to your site. And I'm going to show you how to do that. If you're interested, this is where I want you to go. Enter your email address there. And when I schedule another webinar, I will share it with you. But that's where I want you to go. It's called supersiteformula.com. And I want you to, you can, I'm going to let you know because I'm going to build a super site right on that page. And I'm going to show you up front what I'm doing and, um, and you will be able to look over my shoulder and I'll point things out to you because it's time that we start building businesses that are really worth anything. Now, there's nothing there for sale. When you enter your email address, you know, I'm just going to know, okay, I'm interested in learning more. <clears throat> and um, the bottom line is uh, that go there, put in your email address, and then I will keep you posted. Now, right now what we're going to do is we're going to take a pause. I'm going to take a sip of water, and then uh, Glenna is going to come to me with your questions, and I'm going to answer your questions. Okay. We are ready, Glenna. Okay. If you have a, if you have a question, um, either an old question from earlier or a question now, just type it in and, and we'll get to it. And I'll do the best of, that I can to answer it. All right. Um, one older question was from RP. He's asking, how do you know all of this? Oh, boy. Um, how do I know all of this? Because I study the internet and I've been following the internet and what's been working for a long time. And actually, um, how I gather information is, is, is part of what I will be teaching you. You have to become the expert in your niche. When you have information, you know what they say, information is power? Well, that's how this works. Information is power. And Adam asked, um, are exact match domains worth anything anymore? No. Um, and as a matter of fact, Adam, I hate to say it, but there are a lot of people who kept their noses clean, and because they had an exact match domain, they got penalized. I stood next to Matt Kutch, Kutz, and a guy came up to him who had an ethical clean site called runningshoes.com. It ranked page one on Google. And when the exact match domain penalty came out, he, his site, which was an ethical site, was penalized and booted to Kamchaka. And he didn't do, they didn't do anything wrong. And needless to say, their business was suffering. OK. And Aaron is asking, is the, are the warrior special offers then total scams? Um, are they scams? No, but they will bite you in the butt really hard. In other words, if you buy any kind of a linking package or you buy any kind of software that's going to build links for you, those are going to hurt you in the end. Sooner or later, Google is going to bite you for it. And Frank asked, what is the solution regarding article directories now? The answer to that, Frank, yeah. is, is that that ship has, si has sailed. Article directories are of absolutely dubious value. Matt Cutts from, um, uh, Matt Cutts from Google has stated explicitly, and this is one of the places that, um, that I get my information from, is I pay attention to what Google is saying. And Matt Cutts said, we'd rather 
the information be valuable and be on your site, then it be on a other site just so that you get the link. And so the article directories is the way people were doing the internet for you know, and then Google slammed them and they said that they were just there for a purpose of spam. And so article directories have very limited value today. It's a, it's a trick and Google can take it away at any period of time. Okay, and Scott asked if there is a magic number of links that creates sort of the red flag in Google for them to investigate your site. And the answer is no. It's the source of the links. If you have, um, if you are linking from a bad site, it could be even one bad link that brings you down. And Carol asked, can you get dinged for buying content on Fiverr? Um, and the answer is, if it's not original, yes. In other words, there's something that people use. It's called PLR, which is what, private label rights. Rights, and you're buying content that's you know all over the place. It's one of the nastiest scams that are out there because people are think that they're buying content and they're saying, "Hey, I bought it. I have the right to use it," but you don't realize that it's kind of like zero mostel and the producers and. Um, it's of no value to you. I'll be gross here, but it's kind of like a used condom. You know, once it's used, it has no value, and you're kind of holding your hand up over your head, jumping up and down, and waving, "Hey, Google, look, I'm a scammer." Okay. Um, kind of, kind of blunt, huh? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Okay, Patrick is asking. Okay, he understands the concept, but how does that work for him uh, since he's trying to build his own electrician site? Okay, so that's what we're gonna. We're, that's what I'm going to be covering with you, Patrick. If you want to build a legitimate electrician site, it's actually pretty e easy on a on a local level to do that, and you know, and and get onto page one. It's just a matter of doing what Google wants, and I'll be teaching you that probably in the next webinar on this concept. And Aaron would like to know a ballpark of what you make a month with the Doggington Post site. Well, actually, what I did was I actually made a mistake. And the mistake that I made, and I'm being upfront and honest here, is that I spent from when we launched the site, let's say around February 1st, through the end of, of June just getting traffic for the site building the site, building the team, and getting traffic, and lots and lots of traffic. And I did not spend any time at all on, um, on getting income for the site. In the month of July, I started thinking about income and talked about it with the team. And in August was the first time we started putting up ads on the site and building income. So probably around August 18th, we put our first ad up, and it was an AdSense ad, and we made I don't know, maybe $180 for you know two weeks out of the month. Then the next month, it was up to we just put the check in the bank yesterday. Let's say $480. Now I didn't look, but um, for the month of October, it's at $650, and that's just AdSense. Now, in each of those months, we also made money from Amazon. So right now, in the past month, the site probably made about $1,000. And again, it's only because we didn't start earlier. That was my mistake, and I should have been focused on earning more. Now, that kind of a site, um, should be able to earn without that much difficulty, just more traffic, should be able to earn somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars a month just from advertising. Excellent. Okay. And James is saying um, he has the curation course. Is that still okay? Curation is okay, 
But in the course of doing the Doggington Post, I learned about things, again, because Google changed, that we just didn't know then. So curation works, um, but now there's stuff that builds on that and goes beyond. Also, the rules have changed. So many people built, um, built sites and, and are, are, are taking um, information from uh, newspaper sites that they, they've kind of been a little bit of a backlash on that. That's why we told people if they kept up, you know, stop quoting newspapers. And as soon as they stop quoting newspapers, and even though they're still linking to the newspapers, um, uh, you know, the newspapers are still not happy. Now they've added, not only can't you quote us, you can't even rewrite our material. So they're going desperate because lots of mom and pop sites who built curation sites are getting more traffic than they are. So these are developments that we're going to be talking about. Curation still works. Okay. And um, Paul's asking, so this will work for local businesses, different health uh, ish, uh, topics, so all types of sites? The and the answer formula? to that is, the answer to that is, uh, that's a really good question. Google evaluates each and every site based on the niche that it's in. So let's say that you want to build a site in a niche that Google hates, and that is, let's say, make money from home. Google sees so much scams in that site, it's going to take Google a lot longer um, to trust a site in that niche than, let's say, a local electrician. Okay, And you can't really blame them because Google wants to keep it clean. Okay, uh, David's asking, are press releases considered SEO? Press releases are considered SEO. They are also helpful because they get traffic to your site. So they're good on two reasons, SEO, but they're also good because we use them for traffic, not for SEO. Okay. And Robin's asking, how is this going to be different from, from curation? Because there are lots and lots of, of um, there are lots and lots of things that we've learned in the in the past couple of uh, of months that we didn't know then. Yeah. <laughs> and Patrick's asking, is this a live webinar? Yes, it is, Patrick. No, and no, come, on, <laughs> come on, Lena, admit it. It's not a live webinar. Well, you freaked my, my dog isn't. My dog really isn't underneath my. <laughs> feet barking and stuff like that. This is all, this is pre-recorded, this is pre-recorded barking. <laughs> you freaked everybody out because you said, um, this is the day after Thanksgiving, instead of saying this oh, is the day after Halloween. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. It's just, you know, the brain, I'm getting old and the brain isn't working. No, it is the day after Halloween. And that's why I use the slide for trick or treat. There you go. Yeah, it's the day after Thanksgiving and it's the year 2001. Oh my gosh, that was. Funny. See what happens okay. when I get old. <laughs> I said you had too much candy. You were saying the kids were all hopped up, but I think it was you. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll blame them. <laughs> okay, and then um, uh, Vicky's asking. Uh, so what what ends up happening to sites like Vicky's? Uh, is it best to rebuild from scratch, or do you use a different domain name, or what do you do? No, the first thing that she has to do is she has to clean up the spam links. Either, for, you know, Google insists that she try and get those links down. Okay, I'm telling you now that's not going to happen. But Google's going to ask her for proof, and the form that they want her to fill out is basically going to say, I contacted the webmaster on, let's say, November 1st. You know, I waited two weeks. I didn't hear anything. So here are all the links I want you to disavow. And then you submit it, and Google gives you the whole procedure on, if you, if you Google, Google disavowal tool will give you the whole procedure and probably in about a month or so Google, your site will have none of those bad those links will be there but Google won't count them against you okay. and then it's time to start uh, building a site that Google wants okay. um, Ron's asking okay he's he says, what exactly is Google's problem with exact match domains? He understands kind of their thing, but not everything. 
Okay, so the answer to that, and that's a really good question, is that Google is, has been beset and besought by people buying exact match domains, but they weren't really in the niche. So let's say you want to buy uh, figure skating, you buy figure skating tights.com, but it's really a doorway site to some European porn program. Unfortunately, that kind of stuff has happened way too often. Okay. And Adam's asking, are there still things we can do for a local business that can help their rankings? Absolutely. Absolutely. Lots of things that you can do for your local business. And one of the things is that, um, that Google, wants, um, Google wants to see real legitimate reviews. That's something absolutely that Google wants. Okay, and let's see. Um, Jack is asking, is this what we are, are already doing in CPC? And the answer is you're doing some of it, but not all of it. There's, there's, you see, the CPC sites have value. They absolutely have value. But there's a difference between a CPC site and a super site. Our sites have video on them. Now, imagine for, let's say, Jack, count in your niche, and I know what your, um, your niche is. Um, imagine instead of just, um, uh, just videos, imagine your site was the final stop uh, for everybody who wanted to uh, to find out about your topic. What do you think your site would be worth then if people who were interested automatically came to your site? And Eric's asking, how do you go about finding keywords to use on your site? Keywords? Keywords are ancient history like the dinosaurs. <laughs> So stick around and I'll show you what we're doing instead of, of keywords. And Shaw is asking, do we limit the super site to one niche? Okay, so obviously what you are, are suffering from is the idea that you need more than one site to make serious money. This past weekend, someone came up to me and he said he was going to be starting. He didn't know I was in the meditation niche. He told me he was going to be starting a large site in the meditation niche. And then he said to me, and after I do the meditation niche, then I'm going to do an online karate school. And I went to him and I said, if you build a good meditation site, why would you need another site? And it just floored him because people think that you need multiple sites to make money. You don't. You need one super site. That's it. And then you dominate the niche. And Mike's asking, can a newbie do it? Um, actually, this is one of the things that I learned about blog curation is that it worked, but a lot of people thought it was hard. So. I've learned how to make the process a whole lot easier. Cool. And Joanne is asking, I'm in your creation, curation course and I love it. Is all the info in there or how much is new info not in that course? Oh, there's a lot of new info that's not in that course. There's a lot of new info that's not in that course based on changes that Google has made. Google is moving away from keywords towards a new kind of search and that new kind of search is the future of the internet and it is actually has to do with um, we'll use the word semantic search and that is the future of the internet. You want to know how many keywords we pay attention to on the Doggington Post? I'll tell you, none. 
Dita asks, I am building a brand site related to internet marketing, quality articles and information. I am not taking shortcuts. Is it possible in this niche? The answer is heck yeah. The answer is heck yeah. But a lot of people get the idea from looking at stuff on the internet, for, um, marketing forums, that you can build this by tomorrow. Okay. Now let's pretend that you opened up a business. Uh, Glenna, pick a food that you like. Pizza. Pizza. Okay. So Glenna is going to open up a pizza store, and she goes and she learns how to cook pizza, and she learns how to, you know where to get, and she invests money, and she opens up a pizza store, and she gets grand opening signs and people to hand out flyers, and maybe there's going to be even be um, a grand opening special, you know, like. Um, um, free liter of so, free two liter bottle of soda with every pizza for the first day, and people line up and and buy the pizza and she gets lots of people in and then the pizzas are half price buy one get one free and get a two liter bottle of soda, and day one you know there's gonna be lots and lots of people there. Glenna, how many people do you expect are gonna be there on day two or day three or day five? Um, a quarter. Okay, or less. <laughs> Because when you build a business, it takes time to build a business. And when you're there and people come in the neighborhood and they find out that you've got some really good pizza or really good service or that you're really nice to their kids and, you know, kids get, uh, you know, that you have stuff waiting, uh, that little, you, you have little mini pizzas waiting for the kids and that when their kids come in and they can't wait for the big pizza and you come out with like little round pizza crackers for the kids right away, uh, pretty soon people are going to start coming for you. But it doesn't happen overnight. Now, everybody and their brother knows that when you build a business offline, it doesn't happen overnight. And yet they think because they've fallen for the warrior forum um, Kool-Aid that it's going to happen overnight. And the answer is no, it's not. But at the end, when your site is worth hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, then you go, oh, you know what? That was worth it. Right. Herb is asking, is this a redo of the blog curation course, or are you not supporting that for the one plus one members? No, I'm still I'm still supporting um Blog curation, no what, what, blog curation of people who are there and the one-on-one -on -one members. Um, you know, I'll help people build a, a blog curation core, a blog curation site. However, there are a lot of things that I've learned that are far beyond where blog curation was. Ernesto is asking how to bury negative search results in Google. Okay, we're we're not. Um, we're not really focusing on that. Um, we're not focusing on that. That is an entire course in and of itself. Um, the best person, and again, you know, the best person who does that that I know of is a friend of mine. His name is Ross Goldberg, and he had an entire course about that. So um, you probably have my email address from one of my emails. Um, if you write to me and say, you know, give me, connect me with Ross Goldberg, um, I'll, I'll connect you and, you know, because he's the best person for that. Okay. Now, I know, I, I know I'd like to be the, the person who is the know-it-all about everything, but frankly, <laughs> he's the expert on that. Okay. John's asking, what's the best way to know what your group wants? How do you find the questions and the themes? That is a huge, huge question. We'll discuss that in our next webinar. Okay, da, da, some comments. Hi, Romy. Let's see. Um, if you don't rely on SEO, how do you get your traffic or following? Super site. <laughs> ask, ask, how does the New York Times do it? How does Mashable do it? How does ESPN do it? Why do people go to them? 
Okay, and then I just have uh, some people asking again on how to do it for smaller local businesses, but that's well, going to be a, in the course. And that's a lot. E that's a lot easier. So we're going to be talking. We're going to schedule another webinar, probably same time next week, where we're going to talk about um, what are the elements of invisible SEO and super sites. But I think you needed to get the background and to clear the air and area about that. If you have a problem. And with um, with your site or with something like that, go ahead and shoot me an email. I'll help you the best uh, um, that I can. Or um, you know, again, I'm I'm here to to see what I can do to help you get uh, better results. And 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 that's it. All right, everybody. I hope. Did, type in. Did you learn something? Did you learn something? Let me know what you think. Did you learn something here? Yep, here come all the yeses. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay, we've got hundreds, hundreds of people who were on it. Um, and the site, w w there will be a replay for this. Um, there will be a replay for this. And, um, and then I'm assuming that it's going to be... Um, 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 I'm assuming that this will be a, that we're going to be at the same time. Um, now, someone has a question here that says your blog curation course came out about a year ago, and it sounds as if the techniques are becoming less effective. And the answer is no. Um, curation works. Curation rocks. But there are things that are there beyond curation, and that's what this is all about. Curation still absolutely works, and um, and it, and if it stopped working, sure I'd sure let people know, but curation sites are getting lots and lots of curation is bigger than when I started blog curation. Um, you know, more and more people are knowing about curation. More and more people are doing curation. Um, but this is going even beyond curated sites. And I'll be sharing with you um, what I've learned from, from the journey. All right, everybody. Um, I'm so glad you joined me. And um, go ahead to Supersite Formula and get on the list. And we will let you know um, when the next, um, next webinar is. But expect it, hopefully, next Thursday. All right, everybody. Thanks, Glenna. Take care. And there we go. Bye, everybody. Bye.